Kiev University of Arts. In the afternoon of October 5, 1972, Yevgeny Arekhov, a student of sculpture, walked into his workshop to find the dead body of a 20-year-old model, Victoria Panchenka. The floor was covered with torn sketches and fragments of broken sculptures. A team of criminalists established that the death occurred no more than two hours ago. The girl's carotid artery was punched by a stab with the scissors, not too deep, but very precise. The detective knew that the carotid artery rupture does not entail abundant bleeding, while here there was a lot of spilled blood, plus strange splashes of blood. A fragment of a fingerprint was found on the scissors. Another important lead was a bush hammer with traces of blood. The broken window and blood on the windowsill shaped up the first idea of crime. A murderer entered the workshop by climbing up the wall and went on destroying everything in it. The girl most likely happened to be in the wrong place and wrong time. The model had her own keys and opened the door, not knowing someone was in. The wall outside and the windowsill kept distinctive footprints matching size 43. The sole pattern could not be mistaken, sneakers of two balls brand gym shoes with original pattern on the rubber sole. The detective was questioning Evgeny Orejo by the university. The young man claimed with certainty the murder was committed by his classmate Vladimir Korsho. They never got along. Korsho was an unsociable introvert, fond of abstractionists. This art trend was never favored by authorities, and abstractionist artists were blamed for bowing before the bourgeois culture. Orehov was mocking Korzhov. Korzhov threatened to retaliate. He sneaked into the workshop to see the undesired witness, the model, in there. Orehov told that their latent mutual enmity culminated in a fight recently. Professor Mazayev was teaching a class to their group in his backyard. Orehov saw Korzhov's work and started to openly ridicule it. He said that even a child would perform better and smash the artwork. A fight erupted, which the professor tried to break up. Korzhov left, saying he hated all of his classmates. Arehov humiliated him even more painfully. The insulted student left, pledging to pay back. Speaking about the victim, Arehov explained she was not a professional model. She was a student of biology at Kyiv University. The young sculptor met her at the botanical garden and talked her into modeling for a small fee. He gave her the second set of keys to the workshop. Arehov also said that two hours ago he was attending Professor Mazayev's class at his home. Korzhov was not there. Detectives had enough reasons to see student Korzhov, and they set off to the University of Arts. The National Academy of Fine Arts and Architecture is based at 20 Voznesensky descent in Kiev. Its history started in the revolutionary 1917 when young creative artists decided to establish an institution following the suit of Paris and Munich studios and cultivating young talents. In 1924, it was named a University of Arts and moved to the building of the Theological Seminary that had been closed as part of anti-religious campaign. Such outstanding artists as Alexander Murashko, avant-gardist Kazimir Malevich, and theater set designer Fyodor Krzyzewski used to teach at the university. The institution was always known for the spirit of free thinking of its faculty and students and an informal approach to teaching. Classes would take place not only in the auditoriums, professors would often invite students to their homes and private workshops. Korzhov could not be found at either the university or at his dorm. It looked like the guy was hiding in his native village, not far from Kiev, to where the detectives made their way. Right on the porch, they saw the two bold sneakers, looking very similar to the pair, leaving footprints on the crime scene. The suspect's mother came out of the house. She did not even try to conceal that her son was at home. Vladimir explained his return home with an injury to his hand, due to which he could neither draw nor sculpt. He said he'd stay home until the hand heals up. At this point, they heard noises from the backyard. The detectives understood that the young man was attempting an escape. Vladimir Korzhov's further behavior only aggravated the situation. He broke into tears, assuring that he was not a killer, even though nobody told him about the murder. A 20-year-old girl is killed in a student sculptor's workshop. As he entered the room, Yevgeny Orechov found his model dead by stabbing with scissors in her neck. 
The young man told detectives that he was supposed to work with Victoria, but the class Professor Mujai was holding at home kept the young man from coming in time. Ariahu was sure his classmate Korzhov killed the girl. In past days, the students had a fight in public, and Korzhov promised to take revenge. Obviously, he got into the workshop to destroy Ariahu's works, but bumped into the witness who he had to kill. The dactyloscopy made it clear that Kodzhov's fingerprints matched the ones found on the bush hammer and on the scissors. The type and reasons of the blood on the windowsill were also identical to the young sculptor's ones. A slight bevel on the sole of the right sneaker left no doubts. These were Kodzhov's footprints. The student confessed he did break the window and sneaked into the workshop. That is how he cut his hand, but at the time, he paid no attention to that. He was focused on what he came there for and started to destroy the offender's work. At some point, he observed the girl on the floor and rushed to her, believing she was alive. When he realized there was nothing he could do, he fled, but he never killed the girl. Fingerprints on the scissors? Well, he grabbed them, driven by an instinct. Karzhov could not explain why he did not call the police. He just freaked out. He understood that if he confesses of the backhaul in the workshop, he will be inevitably charged of murder. The student was taken into custody. At this time, a forensic expert called. She was waiting for the victim's parents to arrive for identification. The detectives walked out of the morgue quite bath. The expert's report said that the victim was into her fifth week of her pregnancy. And most importantly, the wound's depth did not match the scissors' length. The girl was stabbed with a long and narrow blade, while the scissors were stuck in the wound when she was already dead to confuse the investigation. The finding explained the abnormally high blood loss. As the detectives were pondering the discovery, they witnessed a conflict between the murdered girl's parents. The father accused his wife of their daughter's death. His phrase, you buried her two weeks ago, sounded especially stunning. The detectives decided to have an on-the-record conversation with the parents, who told that in the summer, their daughter got engaged with Yaroslav Rezun, a guy from their village. The wedding was set on November. They bought a wedding dress and arranged for the festive dinner. Suddenly, Victoria broke the news. She was pregnant and not by her fiancé. The mother could not control herself and lashed out at the daughter with fists. This pregnancy was a family disgrace. Victoria asked for the money to get rid of the baby. The mother just kicked her out of home and did not let the father try to return the girl. They never saw their daughter ever since. They were not sure if the fiancé knew about her infidelity. The young man was a student at the Agribusiness Academy in Kiev. A serious guy, 23 years old, had served at the army. So detectives began to search for the fiancé. A 20-year-old girl is found murdered in a sculptor's workshop. Vladimir Korzhov is a prime suspect in the case, though he absolutely denies his involvement. The guy's psychological profile and some leads and evidence prompt that he is innocent. The girl's parents told that Victoria's wedding was scheduled for later in the year, but she confessed to parents that she was pregnant by someone other than her fiancé. The girl begged for money to get rid of the child, but the mother rudely turned her down. The task now was to see if the fiancé knew about the problem. The dorm superintendent took the detectives to the guy's room. The young man was spending time in a company of a girl and could not care less about his bride. Yaroslav claimed that he was a free man and could court anyone he wished. Asked about the cause of his relations uh, with Victoria growing sour, he candidly explained that she had cheated on him. He never saw her new date. His suspicions arose a few weeks ago. Yaroslav followed his girlfriend to see her enter a house and then showing up in a window, undressing before a guy he did not know. The detectives explained his misconception. The girl was a model for artists, but Yaroslav objected. Being a model does not make one pregnant. He was patiently waiting. A few hours later, Victoria walked out of, in the company of a young man. Before they parted, they agreed about the next meeting and kissed each other which lifted the last doubt. It appears Yaroslav knew where and when Victoria had to show up. He had every reason to take revenge on the girl. But the young man had no idea of what the detectives are driving at. The news about his bride's death perplexed him. 
unless it was artistic acting, of course. Yaroslav yelled he did not kill Victoria. In a pile of pictures scattered on the table, detectives noticed a photo in which Yaroslav appeared holding a long blade knife. The guy explained that it was a working tool of his granddad, who used to be a cattle slaughterer, and presented the knife to his grandson. Yaroslav never took the knife out of his parents' home, and it must be right there at the moment. The detectives detain Yaroslav. Now, a new question to Evgeny Orechov arise. He did not disclose his affair with Victoria. Professor Mazhaev met the detective very politely. He said that home-based classes work much better than standard lectures in a stuffy auditorium. Working in a gazebo, Orechov was drawing a portrait of the professor's wife, Ekaterina. Later, he was going to make a sculpture. Mazhaev called his wife away to let the detective have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. The officer told the student he'd have to explain why he was hiding his relationship with Victoria and the fact that she had been expecting a child. Areha was shocked. He knew nothing about her pregnancy. Their closeness was free of any commitments. Areha swore that there was no way he could kill Victoria because at that time he was right here. The professor confirmed his alibi. The detective needed more witnesses, but Mazhaev's wife did not qualify. At that time, she was at her milliner's. The victim's mother called the detective to tell that she found weird notes in her daughter's purse. The investigators set off for the village. The mother had to admit she knew very little about Victoria. Between the sheets of a legal pad, she found a small sachet with cannabis on a pack of condoms. In her diary, the girl was sharing her adventures at a strange place she referred to as the pot. These records reveal that Victoria's lifestyle was way too cheeky for the puritanical Soviet society. However, where it all took place and what this pot was remained a mystery. The clue to it came accidentally. The detective heard his colleague complaining on the phone about some new troubles happening in the pot. It turned out that a young man named Gotchenkov, or Potter in English, whose parents work abroad as diplomats, set up a fancy hangout in his apartment. The detectives decided to go there at once and found a team of officers checking the cannabis smelling place. Potter begged not to inform his parents. He even offered a bribe to settle down the situation. The arriving detectives said they were investigating the murder. The young man behaved arrogantly, but the detective's resolve calmed him down. Potter was ready to answer all the questions. He immediately admitted he knew Victoria and swore that she had joined his company voluntarily and out of curiosity. He recalled one conflict. There was a girl who happened to be her acquaintance. She demanded that Victoria leave and never come back. Victoria was snarling back and an attempt to make them up failed. Potter knew little about the young woman who triggered the squabble. A rare guest, married, seems like a wealthy artist named Ekaterina. However, she could have given any name. Nobody checks guests' IDs here. Eye-catching details, smoke cigarettes with a mouthpiece. Mazhaev called his wife Ekaterina, too. The girls saw each other in this hangout a few times. The detective ordered that the witness be detained, and the team made their way back to Mazhaev's house. Professor could not understand why the officers wanted to see his wife. The detective paid attention at a set of knives he saw last time he was here. One of the knives was still missing. Mazhaev confirmed that he too was looking for it, a very handy piece, narrow and long-bladed. He even remembered when exactly the knife disappeared on the day Ekaterina went to see her milliner. The detectives asked for the milliner's address and wondered if Ekaterina knew Victoria Panchenka. The sculptor's wife said she did not. Given the circumstances, Ekaterina was detained. Detectives organized a confrontation, bringing Ekaterina and Potter face to face. The young woman denied knowing her vis-a-vis, -vis, but Potter confirmed that she had visited his hangout not once. Officers thought that searching the Mojaev's house was imperative. They found the missing knife there, and more so with particles of dried blood on it. A 20-year-old girl was murdered in a student sculptor's workshop. 
The investigation reveals that the victim had a conflict with a young wife of a professor of sculpture art. How they knew each other remained unclear. Both attended quite a loose moral company. Detectives had no doubts. It was Yekaterina who killed Victoria, but on what motive? At the next interrogation, the results of all examinations were presented to Yekaterina. The only thing that could reduce her punishment was a full confession. Yekaterina blamed everything on her husband. Mozhaev gave a task to his student, Oryahov, demanding that he sculpt her statue, on condition, though, that another model will pose instead of his wife. Oryahov found a resembling-looking girl. During one of the sessions, Victoria saw Yekaterina's picture, which later helped her recognize the young woman in the pot. Victoria understood it was her lucky chance. She started teasing Yekaterina, so the aged husband disallows her to strip in front of the students, but doesn't mind her visiting dubious hangouts. First, Yekaterina tried to simply ignore the mocking, but Victoria resorted to blackmailing. She needed money. Victoria demanded 5,000 rubles, a real fortune, which Yekaterina absolutely did not have. Yet Victoria insisted, if she does not get cash tomorrow, the husband will find out about his wife's secret life. Yekaterina told Mozhaev she was going to see her milliner and went to Oryahov's workshop to talk Yekaterina into waiting. Yekaterina handed her a thousand rubles, all she could collect at the moment. Victoria was not going to concede. She needed cash and could not wait. It did not come as a surprise to Ekaterina. She had prepared a knife right for the situation. She took the envelope back and stabbed scissors in the wound to make the murder look like spontaneous. She hoped that the short-tempered Rechel will be the first one to blame. She should not have messed up with other people's private affairs. The court sentenced Ekaterina to 14-year imprisonment. Professor Mozhaev filed a divorce long before the verdict was rendered.